let's say that we have a river and we'll create a vector field inside this river that represents the flow rate of the water. So if the water is flowing very quickly, then the vectors will be long. In this case, we want a really peaceful and calm river, so the vectors will all be the same length and the same direction. Now think about what would happen if I added a hose that starts pumping water into this river. Downstream, we'd expect there to be more water flowing, so we'd have the vectors be longer, representing a greater flow rate. Now imagine that I had a vacuum that sucks up water from the river. Now downstream, we'd expect there to be less water flowing, so we'd have the vectors be shorter. Divergence is a way to describe how much a particular point in a vector field is a source or a sink for vectors. So here where I added a hose, that would be a positive divergence for this vector field. Where I added a vacuum, that's a negative divergence. Here the divergence is zero because there's nothing changing the amount of water. In general, if we see vectors spreading out or diverging from a point, or if we see vectors being strengthened after passing through a point, then that point works like a source or a hose, and so it has positive divergence. On the other hand, if vectors tend to converge towards a point, or if they get weaker by passing through a point, then that point is like a sink or a vacuum, and it has a negative divergence. If the point in space does not add or subtract to the vectors, then the divergence there is zero. Let's see if we can find what the divergence is of a gravitational field. So the gravitational field tells us the direction and the strength that gravity will be pulling on an object. Here you can see that all of the field vectors are pointing towards Earth and are all converging towards the Earth. So the Earth has a negative divergence. In free space, the divergence is zero because nothing is adding or subtracting to the gravitational field. You may be tempted to think that free space has a positive divergence because it looks like the vectors are getting stronger as they get closer to Earth. The only reason the vectors are getting stronger is because they're getting spread out over smaller and smaller distances as they get closer to Earth. Really, nothing is adding to or strengthening the vectors there, just the fact that it's a smaller area. An electric field tells us what kind of force a positive charge would feel at any point in space. Notice that the field vectors are all pointing away from the positive charge and pointing to the negative charge. So the positive charge has positive divergence, and the negative charge has negative divergence. Once again, free space has no divergence, or a divergence of zero, because it's not adding to or subtracting to the field. Here's something that I think is really interesting. Magnetic fields have a divergence of zero. That means that the magnetic field vectors never start or end anywhere. Outside of the magnet, they go from north to south, but inside of the magnet, they go from south to north, so they never start or end anywhere. That's why if you split a magnet in two, you don't get one north pole and one south pole. You'll get two smaller magnets, each with the north and south pole. Okay, we've talked a lot about what divergence physically means. Now let's talk about how to calculate it. I'll call my vector field f, and I'll say it has components p and q. So p is a function that will give me the x component, and q is the function that gives me the y component. The divergence of f is equal to del dot f. Now, that little del might not be very familiar to you. What del means is you can think of it like a vector, and its components are partial with respect to x and partial with respect to y, and then if it has a z component, partial with respect to z, etc. So then to find del dot f, I would take my x components together, so partial with respect to x of p, and then add in my y components, so partial with respect to y of q. Now take a minute and look at that equation, because it actually makes a lot of sense. Partial of p with respect to x is the amount that the x component of your field is increasing as you increase x. And then partial of q with respect to y is how much the y component is increasing as you change y. So it makes sense that if you add the two together, you'll find how much you're adding to the vector field at that point. Let's do an example. If my vector field has an x component of 3x squared minus 5y, and then its y component is 2 plus y, let's see if we can find the divergence. So first, we find the partial 
of the x component with respect to x. So we'll take the derivative with respect to x and treat y as a constant. So 3x squared, if you take the derivative, becomes 6x. And then the minus 5y is like a constant, and its derivative is 0. Then we'll add in the partial of the y component with respect to y. So that's just 1. And so 6x plus 1 is the divergence of this vector field. Whenever that's negative, so whenever x is less than negative 1 sixth, then the divergence is negative, and it's as if there were a vacuum sucking up the vectors of this field. Whenever it's positive, then it's as if there was a hose pumping more vectors into the field. And that's the divergence of a vector field.